Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome to this latest Chassis Sim video tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about a topic that has been very long overdue, and that is the Chassis Sim Hybrid Toolbox. So let's get started. Now, the Chassis Sim Hybrid Toolbox has been part of the Chassis Sim furniture since the early 2010s. And it also spawned the EV toolbox. And a lot of the features that were developed for the EV toolbox has also fed back into the hybrid toolbox. So to an extent, these are very, these, uh, both the EV and the hybrid toolboxes share a very, very close um, relationship. Now, in terms of where the Chassis hybrid dump toolbox um, lives in the food chain, its primary role is twofold. Number one, it's your first go-to when you're specifying what you need out of a hybrid system. So when you're starting to think about how much um, energy you need um, for regen, um, how much energy you want um, when you discharge, where you want to distribute this, how you want um, the brake bias all um, varied because of this, this is where um, the Chassis Sim um, hybrid toolbox comes um, into play. Now, it's not going to go through and tell you, okay, well, you've got to run uh, this many volts, you've got to have that much current, et cetera, et cetera. That's not its job. Its job, though, is so that you can turn around to the systems engineers designing the hybrid system and say, right, this is what I want, and this is what it needs to do. So that's where its primary role is. But the other spin-off of that is because of the nature of what hybrid is and because of the fact that hybrid takes up such a significant amount of your brake, particularly for modern hybrid systems, there's a lot of elements that can be optimized and exploited as a result of this. And this is pretty much where the Chassis Hybrid Toolbox fits into the ecosystem. Now, in terms of the channels in the, in the simulated data you need to look at, so what I've done is I've just did a very quick, a very quick um, LMP-free type hybrid um, simulation around um, Eastern Creek. And the, and the channels that you really want to pay attention to when you're looking at how your hybrid system is performing are these bottom four. So what we've got here is we've got charge power. So that tells you the amount of energy that you're using in, um, uh, in regen. And down here is telling you the amount of energy that you're using in um, discharge. The other um, two channels that you'll be watching very, very closely is the hybrid charge and the hybrid discharge. Now, the hybrid charge is a very important channel in the fact that when you specify an energy limit, the hybrid charge will actually tell you how much you've been able to harvest per lap. And if you haven't been able to hit your target, you can then go through and play with that and to figure out, okay, what are my limiting factors here? Do I need to back off a little bit in terms of uh, my mechanical braking so I can get the appropriate hybrid charge into the system that I need, or alternatively, there might be some other bits and pieces um, that are holding you back. And, and, that is a, and that hybrid charge channel is a really good way of um, looking at that situation. Your hybrid discharge channel, obviously, is the twin reflection of it. It tells you how much you're able um, to get out. And we'll talk about the, uh, the ramifications of that shortly. The other important channel to pay attention to, and this is particularly to um, the guys who are going to have to be implementing your hybrid system is your hybrid torque. So that is something that you would pass on in terms of, right, this is the amount of torque requirements we're going to need. And more importantly, this is also something that you pass on to the gearbox, uh, your powertrain um, designers to say, right, you need to stress for the engine torque plus this. So all of that um, is all um, to hand. Now, before we have a bit more of an in-depth look at the um, chassis sim hybrid features. I just want to make a very quick note about some of the more advanced um, hybrid um, features that chassis sim brings to the party. In particular, you're going to be using distance versus parameter maps for a particular circuit. So typically, you'll have distance as your first column in meters, and you'll have whatever the parameter you need in the second column, whether that be a, whether that's a, that is by, whether that's your applied throttle or when you're looking at the amount of hybrid you want to discharge over the lap, whether that be in kilowatts. But we'll get to that momentarily. That being said, one thing that I do want to point out, and this is a trap for young players when they start, uh, when they start playing this, what they'll typically do is they'll get a monster file and they'll take 7,000 points and then what they'll do is say, right, we want the throttle to be this, we want the hybrid um, discharge to be this, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't work that way. You are limited to 100 points. And quite frankly, 
that's pretty much all that you re uh, that you really need. But the thing about the way this has been structured is because it's a simple lookup table, you just specify those areas of interest. So, for example, here's a um, throttle uh, here's a throttle discharge here's a throttle map that I brought up for um, uh, during my testing um, for the Willow Bank circuit. And as you can see here, I've pretty much got just about twenty points in there. That's all I needed. And for the areas that I was very interested in, which was um, at the back straight, I, uh, what I wanted to do here was that I wanted to have about 160 or so meters where I backed off to 80%. And so as you can see here, uh, you can see what I've done here is this is a very, very simple lookup table. Now, for those of you who, are specific, who really want a sudden lift off in the throttle, typically what you would do here is that you would make these distances very, very close to each other. So for example, if I wanted a sudden drop down to 80% throttle, I would start at say the 15, 78 meter mark and make that 100. Then at the 15, 79 or 1580 meter mark, I would make that whatever I wanted my, fro my throttle target to be, which is um, 80%. So that way I can very much quickly focus on the areas um, that I um, need to. The other thing too that I would also say, in a lot of cases, it's really, really tempting to go, oh yeah, I can do that right to the nearest centimeter. But the problem when you do that is that you literally cannot see the forest through the trees. So that's why this has been set up in the way that it has. So let's now take a look at the elements of the Chassis Sim Hybrid Toolbox. So to access the Hybrid Toolbox, we click on the engine if you're using uh, the uh, car graphic, or we go over and um, click on the engine, whatever uh, on the um, tree dialog, whatever you do, it's up to you. Now, here, you're going to see, click here for curse properties. So we click on that, and that brings up um, the cur uh, uh, that brings up the curse properties. Now, like with everything in Chassis Sim, the beauty about this is that you can start simple and get complicated later. Uh, and get complicated later. Now, if, to anyone who's listened to all of my tutorials and attended the Chassis Sim boot camps, I'm a big advocate. Start simple, get cute later. Don't do it the other way around. You're going to get yourself lost. So, in simple mode, you've got a curse discharge mode where you can. Discharge on the start finish straight only. Now, honestly, that's sort of a hangover from the original F1 implementation of um, hybrid and curves. It's not used that much anymore, but it's there more for completeness. What I like to do when I'm first specifying a curve system, I'll click on discharge every straight. So it gives me an idea of how of what to look for in terms of where I can deploy um, the curves energy. So here I specify my curse charge limit in kilowatts and my curse discharge limit in kilowatts as well. And here I can specify um, my charge efficiency. Now for this very simple example, I just kept it at one, just um, uh, to um, keep uh, things simple. The next point is my curse max discharge energy for the lap, which you set in kilojoules. Now for this particular example, I set it at 4,000 kilojoules or a four megajoule discharge. You also have the option here of specifying an initial state of charge for um, the curve system. So that's something that you can have a bit of a tweak around. Now, if you are in a position of first, you know, having a, a blank sheet of paper and going, uh, and going, good Lord, how am I going to go through and um, start in terms of what I need to look for for a curve system? I would suggest to leave that as zero to start with. You can get cute with that later, but just leave it at zero for the time being. The other thing too is make sure that when you're starting this, click here to take into account Kerr's effect on braking. Now that basically fixes up an historical foobar that we first addressed would have been about four to five years ago. One of these things, um, it, was an, it was an initial oversight, but one of the things that when you start this now, make sure you click here to take into account Kerr's effect on braking. It's a long story, I'm not gonna get into it now. The other thing that you can do as well is that the way that um, the hybrid toolbox was originally set up is it was set on rear wheel drive regen only. So pretty much mirroring what you had in the early F1 um, um, hybrid systems and also what you had in the first, second gen um, uh, Formula um, E um, setup. Now you've got the option of click here to enable um, Kerr's regen on the front axle and you can now specify your curves, uh, you can now specify what your curves um, balance is. And that's actually a really powerful tool to figuring out, okay, where do, uh, what does my curves, um, uh, what does my curves distribution need to be to make this ideal? So you can start sizing um, uh, your inverters and electric motors on either axle. The other thing, 
The other thing too that we've just added here is a little tick box here. Click here to prioritize curves regen braking over mechanical braking. That was a request from a customer and to be quite honest, it's turned out to be a gift from God. And the reason it's a gift from God is that when you click on here, what that does is that goes through and prioritizes the, when it uh, when chassis sim goes through and breaks, what this will do is this will prioritize it will it'll use up the curves re, uh, the hybrid regen first and then do the mechanical braking later. What that means is that once you've got that uh, that, that done, you can start playing around with your FB brake parameter to see okay what does the sizing of the mechanical braking what does the sizing of the mechanical braking need to be so you can actually work these two in parallel and that's actually a very very powerful tool now in terms of the advanced parameters okay so you click here to enable um curse hybrid for all wheel, uh, all wheel drive so that allows you to specify a torque distribution how much um, occurs do you um, want to run on the front uh, on the uh, front axle as well as the rear axle and it mirrors very much what is currently um, uh, uh, what is currently in the gearbox um, in the gearbox options you'll see in the gearbox options when you go to simulating all wheel drive zero is rear wheel drive one is front wheel drive and here you can specify it as a percentage whether you want all of your curves discharge happening on the front axle or in this case zero all of it happening on um, the rear axle also too you've got here an option um, enable, um, uh, 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 you can click here, enable um, engine energy correction um, uh, to power delivery. So here we've got energy correction as a function of, um, for, uh, as a function of throttle and RPM. You've also um, got some um, correction factor as a function of, of, um, of, um, of energy stored. So that is um, pretty much how much you've got stored up in terms of megajoules and how that affects um, the, um, uh, how that, um, affects the efficiency and you do the same thing um, for um, uh, and you do the same thing for um, the uh, for um, uh, the front and the rear as well so those uh, but really when you're looking at that that's more of a fine tuning the really really though important part here is and this is where you're going to be playing around with a lot is click here to enable power delivery as a function of distance so here going back to what we discussed previously, where we had those distance versus parameter maps, you're going to be playing around with this a fair bit. And where you're going to be playing around with this is a fair bit is that you'll start off on the simple mode, um, discharge energy and every start finish rate, just to get it a gauge in terms of where um, the curves needs to be applied. And once you've got that, then you can go into here and fine tune that. Now, the great thing about this is this can be scripted. So you can run a whole bunch of design of experiments here to go through and really um, uh, uh, and um, really um, ref uh, refine that. Also, too, the other option that you've got here, click here to enable heat energy recovery or HERS. Um, so you've got your um, uh, so you've got your HERS charge efficiency. You click here for HERS or heat engine as a uh, function of distance. And again, this basically allows you to go through and fine tune what you would need from a heat energy um, uh, recovery system. So you can so in addition to the hybrid, you can see what the HERS is doing. The other spin off of all this is uh, uh, as in terms of your re in terms of your regen, you can specify a very simple target here where you've got um, your curse charge limit. The other thing too is that you can dive into um, the EV toolbox. And if you go into your charging regen options, if you click on here to enable your edit um, uh, uh, braking maps, you can now specify what you want out of, uh, in terms of regen options, you can now specify this as a um, brake pressure versus torque map. And then, you can specify what you can then uh, fine tune what you want as a function of that, and you can put that back into um, your hybrid. Uh, you can put that back into your hybrid system. So there's quite a bit for um, you guys to um, play with. Now, in the chassis sim help, you've actually got all of these features fully documented, but I really wanted to touch upon this as a companion to that to really just to, just to throw a bit of shade and color. Um, into that. So, honestly, in terms of what you can do with um, the uh, in terms of what you can do with um, chassis sim and hybrid, honestly, 
um, pretty much it's pretty much down to your um, imagination, really, in terms of how you really want to um, ex- uh, how you really want to explore this. Now, and as a follow on and a case in point, and this is a uh, and this is a follow on from uh, uh, from a uh, recent video I did about um, electric vehicles and the state of play. For me, one of the big blind spots about the whole climate change and how we address this debate is the role of the hybrid. Now, a lot of people have thought, okay, hybrid's just a transition thing until fully electric vehicles. I would actually contend that hybrids are still a very important part of the mix. Here's why. When I did a electric GT analysis of the Bathurst 12 hour, the, the fully electric option just simply wasn't viable on a number of different levels that I'm not going to get into now, but it's probably dri- driven by, bat- by energy density. That being said, I went through and actually looked at the charge power requ- at um, the charge power requirements of what I was generating through the hybrid system over the uh, over the Bathurst lab, and pretty much the capacity that was being generated was about one point eight two ampere hours. Now that's a battery pack of about fifteen kilos, and what you're seeing here, particularly here, is the net result of that uh, of the net result of that. Um, red is um, the non uh, is uh, the uh, non hybrid curse. Black is with it on, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of a speed difference here. So there's quite a bit of cheddar there that can be um, optimized. And for me, particularly when we talk about road car applications, hybrid still has a very very important role to a uh, uh, very important role to play. And by the time you package up your battery pack. Your motor and ciliaries, yeah, you're talking about uh, you're talking about something, yeah, you know, in the order of about you know, sixty, maybe seventy kilos in terms of a weight penalty, but it can still have that sort of an impact. So that is certainly something that, particularly if you design it into the vehicle from day one, you can get a lot of cheddar uh, cheddar out of it. And of course, the great thing is using the chassis hybrid um, toolbox, you can explore that at length and specify what you need your targets to be. So wrapping up, the chassis. The Shastim Hybrid Toolbox is a very powerful tool. Now there are any, and the other thing that I also want to mention is there are many elements of this that can be scripted. So if you have to do a design of experiments, you can go, okay, boom, 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 this is what I want to try, and you uh, and the data will be spit uh, be spit out. And you can go through and um, uh, review it. But really, where the Hybrid Toolbox fits into the food chain is it's a brilliant tool. To understand, to specify what you need out of a hybrid system, and then once you know what you need out of a hybrid system, you can then go through and optimize what to, uh, to exploit and optimize what you have. And so that's pretty much where the hybrid toolbox um, fits into um, the scheme of things. But don't take my word for it. For those of you who are already members of the Shastim community, you already have this on type. For those of you who are getting a little bit interested, but you want to uh, try this out for yourself, this is actually part of our online simulation. So you can actually have a bit of a play with this um, yourself. So I'll leave that with you to um, investigate the online simulation and we will catch you in the next Chassis Sim video tutorial.